Hello everyone and welcome to Virtual Sages. My name is Dr. Rana Higgins. I am a minimally invasive and bariatric surgeon at the Medical College of Wisconsin in Milwaukee. Today I'm going to be talking about current applications of the robotic platform in general and bariatric surgery. My disclosures are that I am a proctor for Intuitive Surgical and I am a speaker for WL Gore. So today I'm gonna to be talking both about robotic general and bariatric surgery. I'll discuss the publications that are out there in regard to both, what procedures are being commonly performed, as well as the data that we can find in the literature regarding the clinical outcomes. So first in regard to robotic general surgery. So if you look at the trend in PubMed of publications within robotic general surgery, you'll see very few publications in the 1990s, in the early 2000s, you're starting to see a little bit more interest, but starting from 2010, you can see a precipitous increase in the number of publications between 2010 and 2019, with the most ever publications in 2019 of 552, and for the first few months of 2020, already about 137 publications. So really in the last decade has there been such a significant increase in the amount of publications in regard to robotic general surgery. So what about robotic surgical volume? So overall you can see that U.S. procedure volume in total has increased significantly from 2010. Gynecology and urology here have stayed pretty steady but really the precipitous increase has been in general surgery where you can see in this orange line from 2010 to 2017, in those seven years, there was quite a significant increase of more than double of the amount of robotic general surgery procedures. So what types of procedures in general surgery are performed robotically? Essentially what you'll find in the literature is anything that can be performed minimally invasively has been described as being able to be performed robotically. These include cholecystectomy, colectomy, hepatectomy, pancreatectomy, gastrectomy, fundoplication, splenectomy, bariatric surgery, small bowel resection, appendectomy, and inguinal and ventral hernia repair. And what has this trend shown us in regard to how robotic surgery is being adopted with among hospitals? This was a publication from JAMA in 2020 of the Michigan Surgical Quality Collaborative between 2012 and 2018. This was a study of 73 hospitals, so about 90% of all surgical procedures performed in Michigan and almost 170,000 patients. So as you can see here of patient and hospital characteristics between this time frame, in regard to surgical approach, about 8% were performed robotically, 50% laparoscopically, and 41% open. And what have been the trends in the use in regard to each of these three procedures between 2012 and 2018. So as you can see, laparoscopy a bit of a decline, open a little bit of a decline, and robotically between 2012, a little close to 2% to under 20% in 2018. So quite a significant increase robotically and a, a mild decline here laparoscopic and open. So what has been that trend in terms of the numbers? So overall in 2012, the amount of robotics was about 1.8%, but in 2018, that increased to over 15%, which was an over eight-fold difference compared to 2012 and 2018. And where has the majority of that increase really demonstrated itself? And that's primarily in inguinal and ventral hernia repair. You can see less than 1% utilization in 2012, and almost between 25 to 30% utilization in 2018. So over a 40 fold increase in hernia repair for the robotic approach. And as you can see here, the other procedures, colectomy, reflux surgery, proctectomy, cholecystectomy, and complex cancer resections all have an increased utilization robotically, but the most significant has been in hernia repair. And how does this compare when you look at hospitals versus surgeons? So you can see that in 2012, about 52% of hospitals were performing robotic surgery compared to 73% in 2018. And this 
also consisted of about 9% of surgeons in 2012 compared to 35% in 2018. So a significant increase both in hospital utilization, but even more significantly in terms of surgeon utilization. And what, what happened when these hospitals adopted robotic surgery? So what was that temporal relationship between open laparoscopic and robotic? So here you can see in the, in the middle of this graph, the time point at which a hospital adopted robotic surgery. And afterwards, you can see a steady decline in both open and laparoscopic approaches, and then an increase in robotic surgery over those four years. So you can see that temporal relationship here, both before and after the adoption of robotic surgery. So in conclusion from this study, they identified that the use of robotic surgery increased dramatically from 2012 to 2018. And the use of robotic surgery has increased among all procedures in general surgery, but the greatest have been among inguinal and ventral hernia repair. And as we also saw from this study, the increase in robotic surgery has been associated with a decrease in open and laparoscopic approaches as well. Now, this study from surgical endoscopy in 2018 showed that the growth in robotic procedures was actually from a conversion of laparoscopic procedures and not just from open surgeons um, alone, that actually those performing laparoscopic surgery converted more so to robotics than to open surgeons. So this was a study of the Visient database between 2008 and 2015, looking at over 850,000 patients. And as you can see here, so the light gray is the laparoscopic approach and the dark gray is the robotic approach. So from 2008 to 2015, for colectomy, you had 99.6% lap, and this decreased to 92%, and that 8% difference was performed robotically. Same with cholecystectomy, you see this difference, 99.8% lap, 98.2% lap here, but again, that minimally invasive approach is being taken by robotics as opposed to from an open approach. In regard to inguinal hernia repair, you see laparoscopic 80%, 70% laparoscopic in 2015. Again, an even more dramatic approach than we saw with colectomy and cholecystectomy and ventral hernia repair. Really significant here, 99% laparoscopic in 2008 compared to 80% in 2015, where almost 20% of those were converted to a robotic approach. And again, those were statistically significant. So if you look at inguinal hernia repair here, and you're looking at open, laparoscopic, and robotic, and here you have statistical significance showing that the open approaches essentially stayed the same, but the laparoscopic and robotic approaches were the ones that were significantly different with a decrease in the laparoscopic approach and an increase in the robotic approach. As you can see here for ventral hernia repair, you go from an open approach 80 to 85%, laparoscopic decreased from 19 to 12%, and robotic from 0.2 to 3%. So again, statistically significant increase. So overall, this study showed that was, there was a greater overall growth in robotic compared to laparoscopic procedures, really finding about a 10 to 40-fold increased utilization. And the increase in robotic surgery was from laparoscopic surgeons rather than from open to robotic. So unlike in urology, where we saw a trend primarily from open to robotics, in general surgery, we're really seeing a trend from laparoscopic to robotic. However, the data shows us varying information in terms of clinical outcomes. So robotic hernia repairs have a longer operative time, increased cost, although the surgeon learning curve must be considered when you're thinking about this data. There's really mixed literature out there on the improvements in surgical site infections and surgical site occurrences compared to the laparoscopic approach. Studies, especially in complex open hernia repairs, do show a decreased length of stay. So there's still a lot more to learn about the clinical outcomes of robotics and general surgery, specifically within hernia repair. So now in regard to robotic bariatric surgery, so as you can see, publications really before 2010 weren't very significant, but from 2010 on, 
you really see a increase in the amount of robotic publications really dramatic between 2018 and 2019. So you are seeing an increase across the years, especially in the last decade. Now the first robotic bariatric surgery was performed in 1999. There are varying techniques. So you can use a hybrid technique where you use a bedside assist with a laparoscopic stapler. So essentially the robot is performing dissection, but the bedside assist is using the stapler. You can do a totally robotic approach where you use a robotic stapler. And then there's techniques in terms of staple line reinforcement. So no buttress, some sort of buttressing material, over sewing. So there's a lot of variability in robotics and bariatric surgery and in bariatric surgery in general. So that's magnified in robotics. What are the types of robotic bariatric surgery performed that you'll see in the literature? So sleeve gastrectomy, the gastric bypass, and the biliopancreatic diversion duodenal switch are the three main robotic bariatric surgery approaches that you'll find in the literature. So going back to that study of the Vizient database, so when you're looking at bariatric surgery data, you can see the open approach really decreased from 2008 to 2015, as expected. The laparoscopic approach increased, as did the robotic approach. So all of that was statistically significant. So certainly a much more minimally invasive approach overall, both with robotics and laparoscopy and bariatric surgery. Now, when you compare the laparoscopic and robotic, these were statistically significant. Essentially, about 5% more robotic bariatric surgery was performed in 2015 compared to 2008, and that was statistically significant. So again, you're seeing a trend coming from the laparoscopic approach. Now, in terms of the clinical outcomes data, there's numerous single institution analyses there's systematic reviews and meta-analyses, and there's also some database, national database reviews. So this was one of the national database reviews from the 2015-2016 MBSAQIP database, essentially looking at robotic versus laparoscopic gastric bypass and sleeve gastrectomy. This was over 260,000 patients, about 93% laparoscopic, 7% robotic, they did a one-to-one -one propensity score matching and adjusted for 22 confounders in this patient population. And what they found from the data was there was increased operative time in the robotic sleeve. So almost 103 minutes compared to 73 minutes laparoscopic, and that was statistically significant. They also found increased operative time in the robotic bypass as well, 160 minutes almost compared to 120 minutes, again, also statistically significant. And what were the 30-day outcomes when comparing the two? So post-operative length of stay between laparoscopic and robotic, you can see a slightly increased length of stay of 0.1 days, and that was adjusting for pre-op characteristics. Now, when you adjust for pre-op, characteristics, operative time, and conversion rate, that difference, become much, difference becomes much closer. In fact, the laparoscopic is greater by 0 0.01 days, and this is statistically significant. But again, the clinical application of this is, um, is a challenging one in that regard. So overall, similar length of stay in both approaches. Now, specifically in regard to bleeding and stricture rates, the robotic approach did find a decreased incidence of bleeding and stricture. So 0.4% bleeding to 0.2%, and you can see similar data here with the second type of adjustment that was performed. And again, stricture 0.3% compared to 0.2%, and again, similar in the second type of adjustment performed. So greater bleeding and stricture with the laparoscopic approach, but again, with all the variability that we have in terms of buttressing material, stapler use, this is the challenge of national databases is that we don't really know the techniques that are going into all of this. So it's hard to draw significant clinical conclusions. Now, what about the gastric bypass? So there was found to be decreased blood transfusions with the robotic bypass, over 1% laparoscopic for both adjustments, less than 1% robotic. And then for leak, 
0.7%, 0.9% lap compared to 0.5% robotic. So again, data showing that the robotic approach definitely does not have inferior clinical outcomes. If we had more information about the specific approaches, we could draw more long-term clinical conclusions, but this is so far what the national data sets show us. In terms of length of stay, relatively similar. You can see the laparoscopic approach does have a slight increased length of stay, not significant with the first adjustment, and about a 0.2 increased length of stay time in the second adjustment with the laparoscopic approach. So the conclusions here are that compared to the laparoscopic sleeve, gastrectomy, and the gastric bypass, robotic has a longer operative time, decreased length of stay, decreased incidence of bleeding, decreased incidence of stricture as found in the sleeves, and decreased incidence of anastomotic leak as identified in the gastric bypass. Overall, though, the comp perioperative complication profile is relatively similar in regard to all other complications. And again, because of the variability in technique, it's difficult to really know what we are comparing specifically and if it's simply the approach that's being controlling everything in regard to the perioperative outcomes. So in conclusion, the robotic sleeve gastrectomy and gastric bypass have increased operative time compared to laparoscopic across all studies. But again, learning curve and technique must be taken into account. These are the things that are not really described in these data sets, especially the large national ones. But the clinical benefit is uncertain. We still have a lot to learn about what the exact clinical benefit is over the laparoscopic approach. And ergonomics is a very significant part of robotics and especially in bariatric surgery patients with their large body habitus. What is the effect on ergonomics in bariatric surgery? That's something that's really coming more on the horizon in terms of the data out there. So overall, clinical utilization in the scientific study of robotics in general and bariatric surgery is increasing. Hernia repair has shown the greatest growth in robotic general surgery procedures, but we really need more level one evidence to identify optimal clinical applications of robotics. Thank you so much for joining us for Virtual Sages. Take care and stay safe and healthy.